I'm not a big fan of Chris Williamson in general. I think he's a, like a dishonest kind of guy. I mean, mm -hmm. and I think he's, I think he's come around a little bit, but this, this particularly like, caught my eye because of ladies night and commonly what we're hearing on a weekly basis from, mm -hmm. from these women about their exes and things like that. So yeah, I want to get the guys. Why do you on. think Chris Williamson is dishonest? I don't know if it's dishonest. I think that he's very cherry picky with the guys that he brings on. I Super think he mischar he very he mischaracterizes the points that a lot of guys like us in the space make, and yeah. then he doesn't allow he doesn't invite guys like us. And I'm Correct. not saying I'd be the kind of guy he'd ask. He goes, "This is what those guys say," and then when you've got people that say, "Actually, we'd love to come on and actually correct you and tell you what it really means," he has no interest in in doing that. So. He's he's had opportunities to have me on, and I um, I've not had the invite extended. You know, he knows who I am, um, yeah. and he certainly does cherry pick. He runs in a very tight knit circle. Um, uh, whatever. Let's just uh, throw this up and hear what this is all about. Um, you this? dislike is not a narcissist. Every yeah. unpleasant experience is not trauma. Having needs does not make you codependent. Disagreement is not gaslighting. Conflict is not abuse. Taking offense is not being triggered. Everything does not need to be normalized. Speaking like an HR memo is not self-awareness. One of my favorite posts from you, are these sort of the Ein Horseman yeah. of psychology? <laughs> these are definitely some of them. So dialogue around narcissism. It's creating this strange, you know, fan fiction version of narcissism that only lives on the internet. Anybody you don't like is a narcissist. Any form of abuse or, or poor treatment is narcissism. Words mean things, especially when they're, it's clinical language. And we've taken this therapy speak, which is a part of therapy culture, and you use it to inflate every little thing. You're not just offended or you don't like something or you're uncomfortable, you've been triggered. You haven't been triggered. You don't like this or it's caused cognitive dissonance. Mm. Some ways, pop psychology lies to you. Mm. Everyone you dislike is... That's a loop. So... It's funny it's because like four of those five things or whatever he listed, mm -hmm. we hear on a weekly basis on ladies night. Mm -hmm. My ex was a narcissist. He was gaslighting me. I was, I was verbally abused. Uh, and now I'm triggered. Like, it's just, yeah, it's, I just thought that was, um, an interesting clip. Yeah. You well, know, the thing is, the thing is, if you can go and tell people, that your ex is a narcissist or you, you you remove all culpability from yourself and place it on your partner and he's not there to talk about it or defend himself so you go on the internet and you tell everybody how much of a victim you were mm -hmm. and you get points that way and everybody says oh poor you yeah that guy was an asshole and so that's 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 all that it is it's just cope from it's you know it's the whole point people. and sputter you know they always they always do the whole you know finger pointing at you but there's always these three pointing back at themselves and there's a story behind that that they're not often willing to acknowledge. Um, yeah, I, I've got something to add regarding it. that. Yeah, go ahead. I just had a, a recent interaction with somebody that identifies as a feminist. Mm -hmm. So I tried having a polite, facts based discussion, right? Oh my God. <laughs> and. I told her like, "Hey, um, listen, we just exchanged two, three replies on Twitter." Good. Yeah, and um, I told her like, "Hey, um, if you remove ad hominem attacks and uh, manufactured indignation mm. from your reply, what is the actual value that your reply provides?" And she proceeded to block me. Mm. Like, if you take apart the simple i don't know engagement producing aspects of these people's replies and interactions there's very little actually there well they can't they can't debate the the point or the fact or the argument so mm -hmm. that's why they always go back to oh uh, oh who who hurt you uh yeah. oh you're bald oh you probably have a small pp or something like that it's like yeah. It's like, what, what is your opposing fact to deal with the argument? I deal with this all the time. And it's like, the truth sounds like hate to those that hate the truth. And that's just the reality of what it is, right? Yeah, I, I was trying not to take like, uh, not to uh, sit on my high horse. Is that the metaphor that, is that how you use it? Like, I was trying to have a engaging discussion with this person in the sense of, hey, are you so trying to say generally. something? Sorry? It's generally a waste of time. Yeah, that's the yeah. point. 
And I even had uh, one of my friends who's a crypto influencer in Romania. He speaks uh, Romanian and his channel is in Romanian. Mm -hmm. And he told her like, hey, would you like to hop on the channel and politely debate your point of view? And the answer was so all over the place. Like, yeah, your channel is the source of truth. And um, I don't know, such bullshit. Like, hey, I'm trying to give you the opportunity to express your point of view in a polite, civilized manner. Would you like to say something that maybe we don't understand? Like, hey, change my mind. I'm open to changing my mind. If you provide some type of, I don't know, point of view, evidence, argument, whatever. It's so exhausting to to like interact with these people. And at some point, if you like what I what I see is that that you reduce their argument to the absurd in a intellectual way. And that always flips them off like that, mm -hmm. that like that's like triggering them to the extreme. And this is like at some point it was entertaining for me to do this to people like, hey, rephrase their argument so that the obnoxiousness comes out and it's like they, they that's where the discussion stops there's nothing be yeah yeah somebody yeah. just pointed out in the comments it's the whole sign language stuff that kevin samuels used to talk about shame insult guilt need need to be right they don't have an actual counterpoint it's just yeah. you know yeah yeah man up who hurt <laughs> you you know it's a standard sort of trope it it, it never gets to a intellectual discussion about a difference that makes any sense. So no... like Drag goes, next time, just call me. I'll come over and then I'll take my fist and I'll punch you in the balls, and that'll be it'll be like less painful. But we can go for drinks afterwards, though, right? So maybe. Oh, I thought you said yeah. you were going to go there and bang his wife. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is going into weird territory right now. <laughs> but at least we could go for drinks afterwards, though, right? So it'd be less painful for you than arguing with people um, on. I mean, it, it really depends. So, like, if somebody is arguing in good faith, um, then there can be some productive stuff that comes out of it. But most of the time, that's not the case with mm -hmm. some, someone you don't even know. It's it's not worth it for me, anyways. Though most of the time, but I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here. That clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line, books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.